Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Awesome. Hey guys, it's me, Rebecca. I'm back for one healthy change in our, on our fireside chat tonight. Um, this fireside chat with our special guest speaker, as well as all of our fireside chats, fit into a framework. And I'll pull up a picture so that you can see what that looks like. So um, to me, it doesn't do us a lot of good if we're really, really good in one, you know, snippet of health. So um, well, it does us like, you know, the benefits are marginal. But if we combine one thing with other healthy habits, we can do so much good for our bodies. And um, the whole idea behind Naturally Strong, which is our channel here that you're watching, um, is if you have symptoms cropping up in your life, what do you do? Who do you, you know, who do you ask? What do you ask? What do you ask? You know, what's, what, what kind of remedies do you ask for? So, um, this podcast will teach you all about different natural remedies and lifestyle medicines that you can implement in your life to, um, cover all of these seven foundations of health. Here's the seven foundations. First, we eat to live that incorporates gut health. Everything starts in the gut. You can't have a healthy tree without healthy roots. Um, then we move for health. There's so many studies linking brain activity um, and flexibility to how well we're moving in our life. Um, having a brighter perspective is something we usually need most of the time and keeping that bright perspective is important. Um, cleaning out your space and detoxifying your environment, whether it's internal environment or external environment. Um, understanding what's actually going on in your body, super important, as well as working with a trusted practitioner, someone that you feel like gives you all of the answers or all of the options and lets you be in the driver's seat and pick what mm -hmm. options you want to implement in your life. And the last one I feel like is really, really important. You have to serve the world in a meaningful way. I can't tell you how many of my loved ones. Um, we, we, we fix all of these underlying six foundations. We get them all leveled out. But if they don't have a purpose, they feel unfulfilled. And it's that, that having a purpose, that fulfillment um, that, that brings more health and peace and joy than sometimes the other seven steps. So um, tonight's fireside chat is called one healthy change we're focusing on that on that area of eating well and gut health and we have with us a special guest speaker her name is Lexi and I met her I think two years ago um in a yoga Facebook group is that right Lexi uh, yeah we were in lunar yoga together right yeah that's right it's uh lunar yeah. yoga um and many of you have heard me say oh my gosh there's so much free good yoga on YouTube and one of the channels that I follow is uh yoga with Cassandra and um Lexi and I both followed Cassandra at the time and that's how we met and over the course of the last years, as I've gotten to know Lexi a little bit more and a little bit more, um, I learned from her just recently that she made one big healthy change. Like so many times people say to me, Rebecca, if I could change one thing, one thing to help me feel better in a lot of ways, what would it be? Um, and Lexi's made one big change. So here tonight for your um, enjoyment, <laughs> entertainment, information. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is an example of someone who's made one big change. Now, Lexi is 26 years old. So I just feel like you're like ahead of the game, Lexi, because at your younger age, you have like made that leap. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so Lexi lives in the Cleveland, Ohio area, right, Lexi? Yes. Born and raised. Yep. Woo -woo. So that's pretty cool. Um, Go Browns. <laughs> big city. All of us, well, not all of us, but a lot of us will be watching. We're like from tiny town populations. So we're like, wow, Cleveland is so big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, focus, Rebecca. So, um, Lexi, tell us about what life was like before you made this one change. Miserable. Um, truly. Uh, I wasn't like actually like unhappy, but I definitely just felt like really lethargic and really kind of weighed down and, um, you know, just tired all the time. I mean, and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired is really 
mm. what it came down to. Um, I had sinus infections every four to six weeks from the time I was 19 to 24 when I made. Yeah, that does they, sound miserable. Yeah. Um, so I was on antibiotics every single time that that happened, um, which we all know is not good for you. And especially if I get really, really sick later on in life. That's mm-hmm. not going to help me at all. Um, my body will be immune to those. I uh, I just didn't want to do physical activity because I just felt so bloated and like useless. Uh, mm. And then one day my doctor just had a really, really strong talk with me that I need to to stop eating dairy. Like it was not really a choice anymore. Wow. Okay. So what, what led him to the idea that, that dairy was your big thing holding you back? Well, so my doctor, she's great. Uh, oh, she's she, kind of me. a little Dairy all female doctors out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, she's great. And kind of, I wasn't taking her seriously for the longest time about, cause she had said that to me before because I was in there for so many t- things related to my sinuses and everything. Um, but the, the main thing is just that she really sat down and talked to me that dairy is a very big mucus producer in the body. Um, and she's like, maybe your body, sorry, everyone, TMI, if your body's creating more mucus than an average human being. So you already have that mucus up there. So if I got one little germ, it's over for me. I have an infection, period, you're going to be sick. So eliminating dairy and eliminating one of the biggest mucus producers that we have in everyday food is huge. Um, And mucus also, it weighs more and it inflames everything. Say when you have a sinus infection, what inflames it? It's mucus. Wow. So my muscles were inflamed. Everything was inflamed. Um, I just, and that explains why you're in kind of this chronic pain and like lethargic, like, ew, <laughs> especially after like, think about it, a lot of cheese, a lot of pasta, something like that. And that, and, and I'm not even an advocate for everyone needs to do this or at least just cut it down because it needs to stop being so prevalent, all food. Right. Yeah. Like you were saying, like, everyone I tell weird. says, go ahead. I, I would, I would kill myself if I didn't have my dairy and I would like, if I didn't have cheese and like, I used to go downstairs for my like midnight snack or whatever. My family's half Italian. We have huge bowls of ricotta and mozzarella cheese. I used to eat that like an apple. Awesome. I'm, I am. And I was a chocoholic, love chocolate. Mm-hmm. Not been a part of my life anymore since August, 2017. I just couldn't do it anymore. Wow. Okay. So the one, so the one big change that Lexi made was she cut out dairy and is that just cheese and yogurt or like you said, chocolate, like, is that because there's dairy and chocolate or what did that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Anything. I am so accustomed now to going to the grocery store unless I've had the product before every single thing I turn it over. And if it's at the bottom, uh, for you allergy people, you, you know this, you go to the bottom of all of the um, nutritional labels. Yeah, the nutritional labels. Um, and it says contains in big, <laughs> uh, big letters, <laughs> bold letters. And it, it will say like eggs, wheat products and milk. If it has milk, I'm not eating it. I'm not touching it. And even my mom will sometimes be like, well, you can't have like a lot of milk. You can handle this. But the thing is, is that it will build up. It will build up in in my body and it will make me feel like complete crap. And I don't want to feel that way anymore. I felt so good just within like the first week or two that I was like, Oh, <laughs> this is, this is why my doctor was pleading with me for like over a year to do this. I felt so stupid afterwards. I just wanted to be like, why didn't I listen? Oh man. So first you're like part of the, 
you know, the cheese addicts club where you're like, what doctor? That's crazy. I think my doctor is crazy. She wants me to stop eating cheese. And I totally get that because at one point in my life, um, when I thought about stop eating cheese, I was like, what would I even eat? There's That's, like, I get that question even, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you, so at one point I felt like there is dairy in every meal. Right. And you, you were you just saying how many times you've heard people say, Oh, I could never do that. I hear that still. And it's been mm -hmm. over a year and a half. I probably still hear that at least once a day. And if I don't go out that day, then I would make it up probably in like 10 times a week. And I'm not joking. Like I get it so often. Like, then what do you eat? Or how do you survive? And I'm like, you do. I it, obviously you really you're do. still alive, right? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, you know, you just you cut it out slow. Uh, everyone kept trying to tell me to do it slowly. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend that. That's not how I did it because then I know my mind, and it's very like addictive and like kind of like. Well, if I had it then, then I can cheat then too. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like doing saying it can build up, right? Yeah, and and it could build up. So I didn't and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to give myself any leeway because I know if I did, I would cheat on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -mm. uh and I went cold turkey cheese list, I guess. Uh wow. Yeah. So was it hard did you first come home and like what do I eat tomorrow? I don't know. Like, was there a, was a lot of salads at first? It was a lot of salads and kind of like, and even changing my dressings, you know, I like those creamy ranch numminess, you know, mm -hmm. um, but you've got to, at some point, I, after I felt so good after the first week, I was like, yeah, I'm not going back to that. I can't. There's no, there's no reason to. Yeah, like, there's there's just no reason to. Nothing. It's <laughs> basically the moral of that story. I'm not going to go into I will, I'll get really fired up if I... <laughs> <laughs> fire, you're, this is the fireside chat. Fire it up. I, I really, no, because some people, and then, like, I say that, I'm like, if you felt as good as I did compared to what I did, there's n there's no comparison, actually. So when people say I could never do that, or, I'm like, trust me, I was the biggest dairy addict. When you when I think back, what I would have put if I go to like a place where you build your own pizza and they have like a vegan option, you know, mm -hmm. and I just do that and that's it. I think about what I would actually have put on that pizza mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, and I'm like, I have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so one happen. week, that's a pretty short turnaround. Like most people, they implement these healthy changes. It takes months, but you took one week and you felt better. I felt my, I knew my body was changing. I knew immediately. Mm. And I knew it wasn't a bad change, obviously. Like I felt lighter. I felt, I had more energy. I was, I was just better. It's like what my body was hoping for. Like, finally, you're giving us some relief. Oh, <laughs> and I can honestly say with my sinus infections that caused this entire thing, I've had maybe, I think, I think three, if I really had to, and I didn't even treat the one with antibiotics, so maybe it wasn't even a sinus infection, you know what I mean? But really that congested and, like, feeling miserable in my own head uh, three times. and almost two years now so going which, from having them every six weeks well, to every three to six weeks to that wow so i'll take it <laughs> yeah yeah I'll take it. you can't breathe or even think straight and your eyes cross about everything like yeah when you feel like your head is like exploding like a balloon that's shortly gonna just pop no it's not fun and no yeah no no snack is worth that again right no, no, I, there's so many different options to, um, dairy free and, and I mean, they, tr they try to get vegan cheese down. I wouldn't say they have <laughs> really, but other than that, 
you can get it down. It's, it's actually, I like our char, sour, sour cream better. Now I can say it. Uh-huh. Um, I like that better. Um, my, my buttery spread, which is AK not butter. I will say I'm not one of those people that go to a restaurant and was like, can you cook mine without butter? So I do have like some type of butter when I go to a restaurant. But other than that, I cook at home with my vegan stuff and it's delicious. And our ice cream. I don't taste the difference with ice cream. And I was an ice cream fanatic too. I literally wrote a paper in college about how ice cream can cure everything. (laughs) <laughs> so this is not a deeply ingrained habit not at all <laughs> I know it's all I I swear I was the worst it was so bad but I oh, changed it I changed it real fast <laughs> as soon as I started feeling better yeah so if Lexi can change guys anyone can make the one healthy change yes. right yes Okay, so I'm hearing you say that you just, like, you just bought a lot of substitutes, right? Or do you have meals where you totally, they're nothing about cheese? Nothing about cheese sometimes. Isn't it um, wild that there's, like, thousands of foods out there? And all we're asking is people to not eat, like, four of them from the dairy family. But it's like, oh, no, those are, like, right. out of the 12 I eat, that's, that's half of what I eat, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and you would know. And then you start to realize after you cut out dairy that it kind of makes or breaks a lot of food Mm -hmm. (laughs) for me at least. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of like taco, like uh, Mexican food that has been completely cut out of my diet because you can't have quesadillas with no queso, right? (laughs) Without queso or sour cream. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with Mexican food? And I don't like hot things either. I will say that for the people that are going to defend hot sauce. So, no. Um, As I said, my family's half Italian. I just have my um, noodles because I don't like hot. I'm a weirdo and I don't like tomato sauce really either. (laughs) So I'll I'll do them with my buttery spread and that's it. It really, it does. It cuts it. Pizza, you're not going to have pizza anymore. So think about like, most Americans eat like, you know, pizza, have pizza night in or pizza night out once a week. Right. That's out. Hmm. Um, unless you have, unless you live in a really great city like New York or, you know, LA that's gonna have vegan options, which they, which I don't around here. I don't know. <laughs> yep, we don't around here either. <laughs> I think we have one and they use the same vegan cheese. I could tell as soon as I smelled it the, in the container same vegan cheese I would use at home. So I'm like, I'll just make a flatbread at home if I really, really want this. But do you find that you always like crave it crazy or do you, or not anymore? That have taken the place? Not anymore. Mm-hmm. On my lady time, I'll crave chocolate a little bit. Gotcha. Other than that, I don't, I don't know. And I don't know if it has to do with really with my taste buds because they've changed so much. Mm-hmm. Or the fact that I just know how much it will mess me up. Like, because I've had, I have cheated on this before. Mm-hmm. And what and happened? By, and by the end of the meal, I'm nasally, and I was so sick, we had to go home instead of continuing our Friday night plans. Oh, wow. So, like, one meal within, like, an hour, you're, like, plugged up and mm-hmm. you like, I was like, put me to bed, like, or I'm um, basically, I was pre- probably being really dramatic and like, take me to a hospital, but, <laughs> but it, I, it really, it's just not, not worth it. It's mm-hmm. not worth the sacrifice with how good you can feel just by changing one healthy thing. Um, and I didn't even know it at that point. I didn't know it was going to do any of this. I just wanted to not have sinus infections that often anymore I'm like I like my doctor but I don't want to be seeing her this much <laughs> right and she wasn't crazy as it turns out <laughs> well I, I started saying that and I trailed off we I did think she was kind of crazy just because she like not okay not crazy <laughs> But she, like, opened a wellness center downstairs and is really into, like, Reiki and stuff. And I was really skeptical about those kinds of things. So I was like, is she just, like, trying to make me vegan? But I'm not vegan at all, everybody. I'll have, I'll have a steak. I'll, chicken's part of my daily routine. 
pie and eggs. Don't even get me started. Oh, a lot of people think eggs are dairy. They are not. I don't know why. They people don't think every single food. time I have someone say that to me, I'm like, no, they are just in that aisle or like buy them because they have to be cold. Right. <laughs> because trust me, everybody. Oh yeah. Mayo. Uh, Mayonnaise has saved my life gotcha. and eggs are in mayo, but they are not in that instead of like, because I can't have ranch anymore, things of that sort. So mm -hmm. I resort to mayo dipping sauce for a lot of things. No. As gross as that may sound. It's yeah. So what I'm, <laughs> what I'm hearing you say is you still eat things you love. You still eat pasta. You still eat eggs and steak. And yeah. um, like you oh, live yeah. without, without chocolate and dairy. And, um, and it helped you it helped you stop with the sinus infections. And didn't you tell me at one point that you'd lost like an, a substantial amount of weight as well? The first month I lost 12 pounds, I could finally like define my chin again. I don't know how good of an angle this is. Cause it's uh, like it's down, <laughs> you know, uh, but I lost <laughs> over 60 pounds. And wow. I originally just gained that from a lot of trauma in my life. Like my dad was sick. I was eating hospital food constantly, like while he was in a coma for a while. So I did that to myself. Like I was never really an overweight person, mm. but at this point I was, and it started doing this and I was like, okay, we, I can do this too. <laughs> this is going to be a side effect. I can do that too. So yeah. heck yes. Like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool I, I mean so with that and a little bit of push from yoga and I love hiking I and we have some good trails around here especially during the fall and so yeah I, I lost a, a lot of weight wow congratulations that's not always easy thank you I wish I would have kept it I actually had a like a throwback Thursday or something in my time hop like yesterday and it was my two driver's license pictures put together of that August like two days before I quit dairy and then last March and it was crazy like it doesn't even look like the same person wow I just so defines and I actually you know you could tell I had cheekbones and chin again <laughs> amazing and did you say you posted that on facebook i posted on instagram, on instagram. so i should go and find your picture and <laughs> be like I can, oh my goodness i can find it i'll send it to you no the bomb okay, I so, nothing up, so there was one thought that i wanted to go back to and that's the idea that it builds up so a lot of gut health experts say mm -hmm. that you know you can some things you'll be truly allergic to and some things are just bothering you because you're eating the thing you're allergic to all the time. So, um, you cut it out and there was like a, you didn't have any at all for a few week period, right? And things started feeling better. You started losing weight within the month, but then you notice it's like a couple of times, if you would eat it like one time, you'd be fine. But is it something like if you ate it every day, just a little bit, you're not fine. Right. I, don't, I, I definitely don't feel as well overall if I eat a little bit and I'm not just talking, I'm not talking like straight up cheese, like, because I would never do that to my body again. I'm, I'm like, mm. even, even if the product, it'll sometimes say contains milk products, mm. which whoever even knows what that means, you know, <laughs> what does that mean? I know what, or contain or could have been made around milk. I'm like, what the? So <laughs> anyways, um, I'll, and I'll notice even if I risk it then, and then for even a couple of days, if it's like something we have in the house, a soup or something we have in the house, um, I, I will not feel my best. But if I had straight up cheese, um, I, the last thing, the last time I really cheated and knew I was going to cheat and risked it, Mm -hmm. was down the street there's this pub that has these uh pierogies brisket pierogies with goat cheese and even I, and I was actually testing it out because I'm like maybe I won't get sick off goat cheese because it you're supposed to be a little bit different it's to your body yes. I would try it too <laughs> no 
Uh, my boyfriend at the time, he was rolling down the windows for me, like, cause, and it was like 20 degrees out. He was rolling down the windows for me in the car by the time we were in the car because I thought I might just throw up. It was that bad. I was that like heavy and just, I'm like, nope. Okay, goat cheese, and <laughs> that doesn't work either. So it's really, all out, <laughs> <laughs> all of it. <laughs> um, and it is what it is. I, it, I, must I love how real you are about it. Is. Huh? Sorry, go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh no, I I don't even remember my thought. Well, what, what, what you said? Well, you said it is what it is, and I'm like, yeah, and I love how real you are about it. Like you tried, you tried these other options, like, and you know what works for you. It's a different thing that I have than when people say, oh, I'm lactose intolerant too. I'm like, I'm not just intolerant. I'm straight up allergic to it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we'll take these pills. Like they take the the lactate pills or whatever before they eat. I can't do that. That's not going to help. It doesn't do a thing to me. I will be sick. And then my body will feel lethargic and gross for about 48 to 72 hours. And, oh, wow. (laughs) Like, you can eat that. They're like, nothing's better than chocolate cake to me. I'm like, well, feeling great does. So I'm just going to. Wow, that's mean, I'm sorry. It's just not worth it. Not worth it at all. So I just want to really highlight this idea that um, people feel like, oh, that would be so hard. I don't know if I could do it. In one week, you could probably do anything for one week. If I told you to eat just salads for one week, people would do it. You know, like, just try this one thing for one week and you can feel better and decide at that point if it's worth it to you or not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I completely, completely agree. Um, people just don't know how much better they could feel because they've never gone a whole week without the foods that are hurting them. Yes. And I don't like when people say like, I'm, I hate thinking about these fad diets. I'm like, well, mine wasn't really a fad and it's been over a year and a half. Like I'm just trying to, as cliche as it is, live my best life. I, I just don't, I don't want to wake up in the morning feeling any more tired than I already do. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm already, it's like, I am an anxious person. I have a hard time like navigating life as it is. So my actual gut and body refusing to cooperate, that's a big thing. And when it does now, normally, I love it. I feel fantastic. So mm. you've got to bite the bullet. I'm sending you that picture right now. Awesome. Thanks for finding that. I can't wait to share it. The caption too. It wasn't that hard. (laughs) Okay. So bite the bullet. It's, it is on the other side. If that's any advice I would give to somebody, it's, it's truly just bite the bullet and I wouldn't do it slowly. And a lot of people come to me saying, I'm going to cut out gluten and dairy. Mm -hmm. What are your recommendations? I eat gluten, but I don't eat it as much as I did before because again, what's a sandwich? without cheese right so t- tell us a little bit about some of the favorite things that you do eat like what are your go-to meals on a regular basis people aha i knew it <laughs> was gonna come up <laughs> buy this book <laughs> um uh, and also you can literally go i think it's the first thing that comes up on google is dairy-free spinach dip mm-hmm I have that in my house, in my fridge. It's like with the Nor soup mix and you do like mayo and some, and oh, silk yogurt. And I do, uh, cause I don't like water chestnuts. So I, I do carrots, but I have that in my house to munch on. That's my munchie constantly to it, like, and I'll dip my dairy free chips in it and stuff all the time. What do I make with this? A lot. Um, and I have like all my tabs. <laughs> a loser. Um, I'm a I'm a sucker for soups. I'm really a soup person. And the fact that this condition, I don't really know what to call it, allergy, I guess. I uh, cut out like half my soups because they're all like cream based. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So, and this, this just teaches you like the basics too on like dressings and different things you should keep in your house, like Caesar dressing. If you don't want to keep buying that, if you eat a lot of salad and want to eat it in bulk, don't keep buying bottles of Caesar dressing and you could just do it. And it's understanding the dairy free diet mm. really and what to look for on food labels because they'll hide it sometimes too. Um, like just in custard when they say custard in the ingredients, but they don't say it contains dairy or it contains milk. That kind of drives me up a wall. Yeah. Just, why do that? Like that's just going to make someone hurt. Like it's going to make someone hurt. Um, vanilla nut milk all that once that's one of the simplest things too is that um, with your coffee if you're a coffee person nut milks are great and they don't really taste I don't think they taste any different in your coffee I used to be a soy milk person before I even this happened to me gotcha I would say. soy anything <laughs> let me get a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everyone asks me, oh, soy and hormonal issues. So there's a lot more hormonal issues tied to dairy than there is to soy. So, um, um, yeah, I was hoping this would come up because I have a, I'm, I know I'm only 26, but two years ago I was diagnosed with a pretty bad hormone disorder mm -hmm. um, called PMDD and one in 20 women have it and even then, like, and it's not curable at all. There's really nothing to do. And it's, I mean, yes, it's hormonal, but it's also mental. And I'm on a lot of medications as it is for other disorders. Um, so they're like, we really can't do much. But as soon as they found out that I wasn't eating dairy, they're like, that's one of the best things you can do. Oh, so why did no one tell me that when I was first diagnosed? Right. Because as again, dairy is going to take out any of the inflammation, inflammation, no matter if, even if it's just in your arm and it's like weighing you down and kind of getting like tighter and tighter. It's making you a little angry. <laughs> if you think about it, um, it just, it helps mood. It as helps all around and mm. it's something that I think is important and we all should consider again not mm. that I am a doctor or should be quoted in any capacity <laughs> <laughs> except for when it comes to sociology right then we should quote you yeah, and social work yes social work. social work and psychology yes I am I do have strong degrees in those things but there's credentialing there <laughs> there is <laughs> but it's crazy that oh that's one of the best things that you can do well then why didn't people why didn't we lead with that like <laughs> oh yeah and a lot of people like they would even say exercise they would always say exercise but i'm like but my hi sorry i don't know how pg this is i'm like but my crotch does not feel good uh -huh. And that in turn makes my body or my mind not feel good. Right. But now turning everything around, yeah, there's still some side effects. But at the end of the day, I feel so much better than I oh, did. I'm so glad that you brought that up then. I'm like, hello, that's the, that's the best thing I could have done. <laughs> Thank you. A year later, <laughs> if you're, we've been through countless blood tests and all these other tests on my heart and I just like I could have I could have stopped eating cheese a little bit sooner I know I like yeah. said I should have listened to my other doctor a little bit sooner but if I have a hormone specialist telling me I'm probably gonna listen more than one person all saying the same message it eventually it'll yeah. in, right? it's overwhelming and I have a lot of people saying that too they're like oh you're not the first person to say like they're dairy free now I think they're like I think I might try it like if you try it don't come back to me and tell me you're starting it again then. <laughs> <laughs> because they all think you're a little bit on the deep end if you go back to feeling like crowd yeah yeah well sometimes addictions are strong but like we're yeah, saying they're so addicting. <laughs> yeah 
Um, yeah. I thought the sweet was going to be my biggest thing, but it's, it's not, it's really, it's, it's probably like omelets, omelets, mm. and like gooey cheese, things like that. Things like that you miss, huh? Yeah. I just like sometimes, and I, I'll make a grilled cheese here, like with my vegan cheese, but it's not mm. the same. It doesn't behave like cheese. No. <laughs> it's no. a very it's different it's type of stuff. Just, What's that? It's a very different type of substance. So, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, uh, it, it, you miss it sometimes, but. Right. And, but the substitutes are sometimes nothing like it. And so sometimes it's better to stay away from those things. Yeah. All right. Um, I just wanted to finish up a thought you had started saying inflammation and in once, like I'm a massage therapist and it's so oh, wow. frequent that someone will have inflammation of one, like one trouble area of their body. Um, and I'll rub it and I'll be like, oh yeah, there's inflammation there, but I'll feel it in so many other places of their body. It's like, it's never just one thing that is inflamed. Yeah. And dairy I always think it's just my neck, but I know it's my entire body. That's why I do yoga. I'm like, I know I got to get it flowing. I got, I mm -hmm. got to stop just complaining. <laughs> and yoga really helps to get things get things moved and cleared and flowed. Um, but yeah, it's never just in one place and, and dairy does create inflammation in a lot of people. So if you're, if you're watching and you're struggling with sinus issues or you've been struggling with gut issues, um, or even like we said, hormonal issues, you know, like people, people don't think to cut out dairy, but hello, when is a woman the most crazy? Like when she's pregnant and breastfeeding, right? And we're, <laughs> what are we eating in dairy? We're eating, you know, the whole, you know, including dairy. <laughs> yeah, product of a breastfeeding animal. And so it's like, oh, there's hormones that come. So if anyone watching this is struggling in, in those areas, just to bite the bullet in Lexi's words and take one week to just make the change and see if it affects you like it did her and like it has me. I know it affects me too. Yeah. Well, um, Lexi, let's uh, finish off here and, and, um, and be good to people's time and let them stick to half an hour here. Um, but will you okay. leave us with one more tip of like, what, what helps you when you're craving something or what helped you in the beginning get going? In the beginning to get going. Mm -hmm. Or you could say something that helps you now to stay on the path. It may not sound like a tip now, <laughs> but if I want to have a tantrum about it, I will. <laughs> Even at a restaurant. If I really wanted that cheesecake, which is my favorite dessert, and I can't have it, I'll act like a little kid about it. Because it is sad. It's sad you can't just have what you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of all I got. <laughs> oh, actually, I love that. I, and I wish that more people were open about that. Because as we make these food changes... There is like a kid inside of us that's pissed off and that's has to come out. It's just like you took my candy away from me sometimes and I and I really I wanna sit there and stomp and cry. <laughs> like I'm not gonna but inside I'm screaming. Um and mm. it's just and at first I did. At first I was that ridiculous person who'd be like, we have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> I'm so and, glad you say that though, because as other people get started and feel crazy, like they might quit. Because it is an addiction. It's such an addiction with from both the mind and the body. And you're breaking it and you're doing it and it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't don't feel bad for getting a little bit upset sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My whole office, when I first started this, uh, the Cheesecake Factory was right down the road, and they would order. Oh, shoot. <laughs> like, all of them, like, okay. Like, <laughs> I just take, it work. <laughs> take my lunch break and just walk the halls, like, <laughs> trying so hard not to actually cry. Well, I'd call my mom sometimes and be like, when's it not fair? <laughs> 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 totally but all that being said in a week all that being said it's so much better yeah yourself people yep 
I remember having a fit about peanut butter this one time when I, my blood sugar was too high and I could not have another treat and I was so mad. I'm like, just do it, peanut butter! <laughs> outside walking around like you said walking up, you're taking out. the jar and throwing it over and over like oh no that, yep. means- that part's real but feeling well <laughs> is worth the emotion like what we're trying to say is it's safe to to freak out it is. do it get over it that'll help yeah. you move on and to no boyfriends were harm and harmed in the making of my body by the way <laughs> Because I really, sometimes watching them eat pizza and pasta in front of me, I just, oh, it was a real, (laughs) not okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, geez. I feel like we could chat all night. I feel like we've learned so much. Um, here, Here it is, people, off the cusp from someone who's really done it. And so, Lexi, just thanks so much for having, you know, spending the time with us and telling us about it. I was so honored when you texted me about it. So I'm very excited that it finally came to life. Yeah, you bet. I think you have a lot to share about this. I think it could turn into something more if you were to open up about some of your experiences. You know, (laughs) the dairy-free journey. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I think I need a few more years under my belt, but... I think that after a week, you had enough under your belt to tell people (laughs) I don't think I had a tangent after a week, though. I think you were like, (laughs) that came later. It was pretty bad, though. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you're interested in learning more natural ways that you can improve your health, keep watching. We've got great stuff coming up for you in the future. Thanks again, Lexi. Thank you.